Hey you guys, Matt Allen here. Welcome back to Tactical Bassin. Today we are talking about how to catch a new PB, a new personal best. You want to catch the biggest bass of your life, you want to catch a giant, you still have time to do it. So today we're going to talk about the different baits and techniques that you can apply today to get it done before we head into summer. We all know that the pre-spawn is prime time to catch a giant bass. That's what everybody tells you all year long. Wait for the pre-spawn, wait for the pre-spawn. Throw a jig, throw a swim bait. You're gonna catch that monster bass. Well, in most of the country, the pre-spawn is now wrapping up. You know, at least one wave of bed fish has come through. In some places, you guys are full-blown post-spawn already. Now, some of you, you still have your opportunity. You northern guys, there's still time to get on those big, fat pre-spawners that are feeding up before they go spawn. But for the rest of you, it's not too late. So what I want to do today is I want to walk you through exactly how you can go out and catch that new personal best today. For most of you, there are still going to be waves of the spawn, meaning fish actually coming up and bedding and laying eggs, going through that whole process that they do every spring. There are going to be multiple waves of fish. There's never one wave of fish. I don't care if you're deep in the south or all the way up north, there's never just one wave. They may be stacked really tight together, but there's always more than one. Now, there are some guys that are against sight fishing or bed fishing. That's totally okay, but understand it's one of the best ways that you can catch a monster. So we're gonna talk about it today. Coming out the gate, the number one way, wherever you are in the country, that you can go out there and get them right now is to go out and look for sight fish. If you're pre-spawn, we've already got videos totally dedicated to that. Back up a couple of weeks, watch those videos, they're gonna tell you what to do. But for most of us, it's prime time on the spawn. You need a set of amber glasses, you need to get out there, start looking in the water, start finding those fish. This is the time. Now, as you guys know, we're always experimenting, trying different baits. So it was what, two weeks ago that we did that bluegill bait for you? Two weeks ago, three weeks ago, where we looked at all those different bluegill options underwater. Wouldn't you know that I've already found another one that I really like? I'm a Katsu, this is the Javelon, I believe is what they call it. I picked up a pack of these little buggers it's designed to be a regular swim bait, cast out, retrieve, and it looks incredible in the water. Super tight action. It's that profile that I like so much where it looks like a bluegill. You've got some bluegill shape. It's got a flat tail, which is awesome. It's a, it's a jointed bait, so it, it creates its own motion going through the water. Uh, it's a fantastic bluegill profile to catch fish on, but it's also great for sight fishing. So what I did is I went completely against what this bait was actually designed to do. I got a, this is a striking one ounce shaky head that I ran up through that bait and the bait has this big foam harness in it, pops right out. When I took that out, that means this entire cavity in here is actually hollow. So it takes zero effort to collapse. So what I've done is I've created this bait that I could pitch into a bed and it stands up on the bottom it's got a straight tail. The profile's perfect. It looks like a little bluegill down there picking at the bottom. The hook's not sticking way, way out there where the fish can see it. It's tucked right up against the bait. But when they go to eat it, it immediately collapses and I have full hook exposure. I just picked these up, just went bed fishing with them and slayed them. So I thought I'd throw that one in the mix for you guys. But back on track, first thing, is sight fishing. If you still have a shot, that's the best way to catch a new personal best because you can either put your trolling motor on high or put your hiking boots on and just start covering water and start looking, literally looking for the biggest bass of your life. And then when you find it, we've already talked about the things that you can do to catch that fish. Now, for those of you guys that are ahead or for those of you that go through this process and you don't see the fish you're looking for, Here's the good news. There's one more really good shot at a post-spawn monster bass. 
that's a swim bait. Now there's post spawners going out deep and you can go out and crank them. You can throw 10 XDs, catch true giants. But if you wanna specifically target a giant, if you wanna to go to the lake with the purpose of catching a monster and just dedicate yourself to that, you get one more shot. As you come out of the spawn, your fish will start backing off between the moons. They start moving out. Well, those fish split. You have fish that go shallow, fish that go deep. We've covered this stuff in other videos. But the important thing to understand is that those giant females have to recover from the spawn. So they'll typically go out and they'll set and they won't eat for a few days. They'll just let their body recuperate from the spawning process. But as soon as that's done, they've got to bulk back up. They've got a huge frame, not a lot of belly. So sometimes you're gonna catch those fish and you're gonna think, man, that's a nine pounder. It's got this huge head. And you get it in, it weighs six and a half or seven pounds because it's skinny. But that might still be a new personal best. You might go again and catch another monster and that one's already bulking back up. Lo and behold, she's fat, it is a nine pounder. So the way that you can specifically target those fish is a swim bait. Three styles of baits that I'm gonna use to do it. Paddle tail, glide bait, top water. Yeah, top water. This is the best window of the whole year to specifically target a freak sized top water bass. So starting with the soft bait, after the spawn, I dedicate myself to the paddle tail style soft baits. 6.8 Kitek, uh, I'm gonna rig it weedless. That's the easiest way to fish it because I wanna be high in the water column and the weedless doesn't weigh very much. The other thing that I'm gonna throw is an Osprey. You're gonna throw the Osprey with the belly hook on it, not a top hook. We'll link all this stuff in the video description for you, but either one of those baits, a big boot tail bait that stays up near the surface, a 6.8, a six inch or a seven or an eight, or even a 10 or a 12 inch Osprey, those giant baits, moving slowly on the surface above those giant fish that have been recuperating, sometimes it's just too much for them. They come up and just blast those things from below. This is also the time of year that you can get away with throwing the really gaudy colored swim baits. You can catch them on natural, but you can also catch them on white, chartreuse, pink, purple, blue, all the bright colors. What I really think happens after the spawn is that those fish set out there, they know that they need a big meal to get themselves going again. And when one of those crazy looking colors comes over, especially that white or that chartreuse, they look up there at that thing and they think, what is that? But because of the size, they come up to look at it. And then because a bass doesn't have hands, the only way it can inspect it to know what it is, is to eat it. So they'll come up and they'll grab onto that crazy looking color. This time of year, I don't throw as many of the really natural, slow moving bottom crawling swim baits. That's not what we're doing. We're fishing high in the water column and pulling those fish up to target that bait. Bait number two, glide bait. Again, you get a second shot. The glide bait was awesome all spring long. You had tons of opportunities to catch a monster or well, right after the spawn, you get another opportunity. Now, if you're on a fishery that has a lot of grass and a lot of cover, half your fish are gonna go that direction. They're gonna get in that stuff up shallow. If that's the case, you wanna go to the smaller glide, like a 168 S waiver. That's smaller, this is a 200. The 168 is smaller than this. The smaller glide, I like to categorize those as cover glide baits. They fish really well because they're reactive. You can snap them, pop them, work them really tight to cover and get those fish to lash out. But if your fish pull out and there's not as much cover, they're gonna suspend either on really steep corners and walls, bluff walls. They'll get in the shadows of bluff walls or they'll get out on long tapering points where the bait fish have to come over the top of them. Those bigger glide baits moving slow, again, moving slow. The advantage of a glide bait over a soft bait is that a glide bait, when you see a fish come up and get behind it, you can twitch that bait and get that bait to turn and move and get the reaction out of them. A soft bait, you just keep going and you hope that they eat it. A lot of them do. But if it's not working, turn to the glide because you can snap that rod tip, 
and get that reaction. Last category is going to be top water. And I wanna be clear about when this is gonna work, guys. This can work for me on my fisheries all the way up until the full moon in June. It's like clockwork. Full moon in June hits, it's summertime, this is over. But up until then, you can still do it. As we've traveled across the country, it seems to be very similar. It's that full moon as you're, you're truly summertime now, that last big moon, that's the one where it just stops cold. Up until then, all these things are game. Now the wake bait can continue on all through the summer, but you're gonna start catching a lot more of the smaller fish mixed in, not just monsters. The wake bait, three different versions of top water, or three very specific baits actually. The first one is the eight inch BBZ, trout colored uh, this bait and this is actually the flat trout color it seems to hold its paint better than all the others for me just personal experience not that I even think it matters because they're coming up underneath it but still it does something for me but the 8 inch BBZ floater specifically the floater it has no lip which is really nice because when those fish come up it's just one less thing to, to bounce off of and not get a hook. You can fish this bait slow. You can hear how loud it is. Fish it slow, just get that steady retrieve. You can also work it and pop it and rip it and get really aggressive. That bait will charge and cut to the side. Charge, cut to the side. And oftentimes, right when it turns off, they just they blast it, much like a glide bait. But there's just something special about getting those bites on the surface second kind of wake bait this guy here this is the bull wake now this is a lipped bait but it has a soft tail soft tails are really important to be in a wake bait because when these fish come in especially this bait see how stumpy it is front to back when the fish come in to try and target it because it's so stumpy your odds are going higher that you're going to get a hook because it has a soft tail odds are higher that they're going to get a hook Anything that you can do, whether it's no lip or an ultra soft tail or a shorter bait, anything you can do to maximize your chances that that fish actually hooks up, you need to do it. This style of bait with a lip, you're gonna get a really strong push of water, which means it's gonna create a great big V on the surface. And you can still give them a little bit of a walk and they'll kind of dance. But the best way, day in and day out, is just that slow, steady retrieve around cover. A lipped bait is gonna work better in and around cover, like this junk that I have here behind me, because it can push its way through that stuff, a lot like a square bill. If you throw this in this junk, you're hanging up on everything. This is ideal on those bluff walls, on those steep corners, out over suspended fish, out on the ends of points, where they're gonna be ambushing bait. This style is gonna work way better if you're in and around cover and junk. Again, it's like the population of monster bass gets cut in half after they spawn. Half turn and go into the cover, half turn and go out deep, and they recover out there and then start ambushing and feeding up. And each lake is different. If it's a super shallow lake with not a lot of deep water, most of them are gonna go into the cover. If it's a crystal clear open water fishery with just a little bit of cover, most of them are gonna go out. A lot of, a lot of fisheries are 50-50 split. You can do both. Then the last one is gonna be that giant walking bait. The handful of giant walking baits on the, on the market, always looking for, for other baits. We started playing with the big Magnum Spooks. They work fantastic. Uh, there are a bunch of different options, but this one came out last year, the Mega Bass Mega Dog. We actually picked them up to throw for Striper you guys remember I missed a striper on this thing that was 35 ish pounds I mean it was a monster and she ate it over and over and over and no excuses I took it away from that fish but a giant walking bait up on the surface the mega dog has big rattles in it it's a loud bait but I fish it really subtly I mean if you really worked it hard you'd have so much sound and commotion the largemouth tend to shy away from that but if you slow fish it, just that nice wide walk, they come up and just come unglued on them. 
If you've ever been on a spook bite, if you've ever been on a rover bite, a vixen bite, you know how fun that can be. Your fish will eat a mega sized version of that and a giant, giant, giant fish will eat it too. Uh, three hooks is ideal. That's what I prefer because a lot of fish on a walking bait are gonna come up and just miss it. So the more hooks you have on there, the better. Now I upgrade all my hardware. This is all 3X hardware. Uh, but again, I'm trying to catch monster, monster fish. Your gear, of course, you want upgraded gear. We've talked about all this before, but the 966 swim bait rod, I'm using a Tranks, a high speed Tranks for all of these baits, except for my, my sight fishing baits. That I'm using a standard jig rod for that stuff. But the big baits, whether that's the big soft baits, the big glide baits, my big top waters, I'm using a dedicated swim bait rod, 80 pound braid, then I'm using 35 pound FC100, that system leader, that stretchy fluorocarbon that we've been talking about. That stretchy fluorocarbon is awesome. Now, for the big wake baits, if you use more than a couple feet of it, it's gonna start pulling your bait under. So you can't use it dedicated for that, but it works for everything else. For the big, big wake baits, we still just use 30 pound maxima like we always did, and it's awesome. Uh, but again, dedicate yourself. It's a short window of time that you have right now. You can catch them on the beds, and then when they pull off on that next big moon, they're gonna start interacting again, start feeding up, bulking up, and then it carries all the way to that big moon in June. You can catch these fish. After that, you can still catch them. When we get there, we'll talk about that. But this is the end of that time of year where you're truly dedicated to just that monster bite. The rest of the year, they're gonna be mixed in with other fish. Guys, if you enjoyed the video, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel. We appreciate you. You can do this. You can catch a new personal best. Your opportunity for the year is not over. Get out there on the water. Good luck. We'll talk to you soon. Thank you.